dogs tend to stray I empathize with your cross wires I may even share your twisted desires But never go out of my way To see me fall Oh, do you remember when you came to me On the outside looking in You pitched your tent, stole my shit And hit, hit the road again Never did nothing without an angle down below Like everyone else, only so much more so Never go out of my way to see you fall You can trash my songs, forget my lines Drink of my women, steal my wine You can claw your way to the bloody top But never go out of my way I'd never go out of my way to see you I'd never go out of my way to see you fall I guess it's just a matter of a couple of degrees Between standing on your belly and crawling on your knees Remember you and your demons showing up at the door A bottle of Herodura at a quarter to four I cared for you when you didn't even know yourself Man, I helped you become somebody else Still, I'd never go out of my way to see you fall You can trash my songs, forget my lines Drink of my women or steal my wine You can claw your way to the bloody top But I'd never go out of my way I'd never go out of my way I'd never go out of my way To see you fall Guitar comes the music. Do I look bothered? Oh, you are awful, but I like you. Everybody's voting for the friendly voice of radio, the people's choice. Music, weather, sports and news, it's radio, the people choose. Everybody's swinging to the swinging voice of radio, the people's choice. Big fry, small fry, gone to dawn, it's radio that turns them on. Swing it, sing it. A million sounds you want to hear, it's a landslide every year. Everybody's diving in the 
smiling voice of radio, the people's choice. East coast, west coast, in between, it's radio. Hey everybody, what's going on, what's hot, what's hip, what's happening, what's shaking, how's your New Year's Day? Happy 2021 to those of you who were not with us last night during Tomathon, eight plus solid hours of amazing entertainment. And the reason I am just beat, I am beat, and of course this will be a Friday show and a holiday show. And we all know how well those go. So the great Nate will be with us. And he'll join us uh, in uh, the network programming, which will happen in one hour. Welcome to our bonus content exclusive YouTube pre-show. Still basking in the Ball State victory last night. Got great stories for you. Uh, You know, people set off fireworks on New Year's Day all over the world. And of course... Fireworks kill people, and they did uh, last night as well. We'll tell you about it. We're also going to tell you about uh, cars that everybody hates. Absolutely everybody hates. And we'll tell you about some of your favorite hamburger chains that uh, declared bankruptcy in 2020. Boy, yes. I know you're not going to be happy about that, but a bunch of them did. A bunch of them did. Does not seem like a Friday. Seems like a Sunday. And uh, I went out into public today. I I did one thing that went very well. Uh, And then the the only fast food joint in this 2,500 square mile area, and by that I mean a chain, uh, is a, there's a subway about 20 miles from me, and I happen to have had to go to that town uh, to run an errand, which doesn't happen very often. So I figure, hey, I'll just happen down to this subway. It's New Year's Day. I'm in the middle of nowhere. It's one of those gas station subways, by the way. It's not a fully dedicated, you know, own subway. Man, I got to this place. A lot of people come here that are younger and that wear sandals and hoodies and have bizarre hairstyles and, uh, you know, the stink of granola on their breath. You know what I'm talking about. You know, the people that think they understand nature better than the rest of us and that makes them somehow more lofty and... uh, at one with the universe where it's like, hey man, I live here. You know what I mean? I live here. So I don't, I mean, I'm I'm up here dealing with the mountains and the desert and all this, all the time. I don't just happen down here once in a while and commune with it. There was a line out the door at the subway. And I just went, I'm not standing here for that long just to get Subway. And I almost wanted to say to these people, hey, man, I thought you guys were more one with nature. Why don't you go eat a pine cone? Many parts are edible. I mean, if you're that much ahead of the rest of us in terms of, you know what I mean? So you shouldn't even be eating Subway. Uh, But they were. Some of them had kids. And you, you know how great kids are at a place like Subway. The person's standing there desperately trying to get rid of the mob of people. And they're like, okay, honey, what would you like? I want one with... Uh, okay, which sandwiches have bologna? Oh, well, okay, that's a BMT. That's a uh, blah, blah, blah. I guess every step of the way is, is a discussion. Thomas Hamilton from Glasgow, Scotland is here. He is a great, great lad. Uh, you know, would you like tomatoes? What's a tomato? I don't know, mommy, do I like tomato? I don't know, dear. Do you remember? They're red. They're red. And you're just like, can't you be like my parents? Here's what he wants. He'll eat it. 
Trust me. Actually, my parents would have just brought a loaf of bread, some bologna, and a thing of mustard and just slapped it on it. So here you go. Make one for your brothers and sisters. So, you know, the one place I didn't get to do that. So on my way back, there are some other little restaurants. They were all closed. Some of them are closed for the season and have been since uh, around or before Thanksgiving. So those won't open up until March or April. And uh, so I end up having to drive all the way back. Go to the grocery store. Try and find a sandwich. Which I did. Hey, incidentally, for those of you who are into health and health care and healthy living and lifestyle choices. Hey, Tom, Thomas Hamilton says he likes my top. Well, I'll give you a good look at it then. Capitol Reef National Park. Check it out online. It's spectacular. It the place where I live, actually where I was today, is right on the edge of it. It's it's um, I live super close to Capitol Reef National Park, and uh, if you look it up, it's spectacular. Those of you who are into healthy living, healthy lifestyles, um, if I could just pass along something I learned during last night's eight plus hour extravaganza that was the first annual Tomathon. Um, spending eight hours mainlining, just guzzling coffee and Red Bull. And occasionally a little little Irish whiskey. Uh, that's a major colon blow to your system. Just so you know. Just so you know, so that you don't. Man, I to make this trip that I made today. I I had to very. Let's just say I had to do some biological errands and plan them out and very yeah yeah. You wanted to, and and of course that won't stop me from getting through the. I'm I've, after this show is over, I am going to just collapse. I'm very very tired. I wasn't tired last night doing the show, and I stayed up way too late after the show and got invited to a Zoom event with some comedians on the West Coast. And I dilly dallied there, and then I got offline, and I watched two movies, and you know, so I didn't, I didn't get much sleep, and then got up at pretty much the normal time and did some things, and then went on my little trip, filled my car up with gas, you know, did did a lot of little errands, and uh, I did one thing that relates directly to the Christmas present that I got myself this year. That um, Actually, I have to wait six weeks to uh, get it so I can show it off. I also had the experience this morning, and I'm sure many of you have uh, had the same experience, of when I named today's show on YouTube, I always put the date, you know, the Tom Gully Show live, and then the numerical equivalent for the date. Like yesterday was 12, 31, 20. I got the experience of putting the 21 on for the first time. 1, 1, 21. So yeah, it's official. I, I don't... I understand the psychological effect of starting another year. It seems like, okay, we're starting another new thing. and all this. It seems that way. But really, it's just an arbitrary thing somebody set up years and years ago. I got to cut that back. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. Um, that someone set up years and years ago. They could have started the year uh, February 1st or, you know, on that day and named it something else. It's just, so it's not really, you know, uh, what do they say? Well, over 90% of New Year's resolutions are not followed through on. I do have to say I'm I'm pretty old school. I'm pretty hardcore. When I when I say I'm going to stop doing this or I'm going to start doing that, that's exactly what happens. I don't I don't really have a problem with that. Uh hold on a second here. Oh. 
Oh, I almost had to sneeze. I hate that when that happens. And then you can't. It's like such a such a disappointment. It is such a different disappointment. I did not follow through on my sneeze. Tomorrow, oh boy. Thomas Hamilton, tomorrow, the old firm. Rangers, Celtic. And Celtic need this one. Because not only do they need uh, Rangers to not get any points, they need the points to catch up. So this will be a good way to get a sort of a six-point swing. Terry Lawler is with us. He says, evening all. Hello to Terry Lawler over there in Ireland. We have an, an all uh, Ireland, Scotland chat room right now. That's, that's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. Best of luck on that, Thomas Hamilton. I'm pulling for Celtic, as usual. That's my favorite Scottish team. Always has been. Always has been. Um, my team also plays tomorrow, but long after yours. Let me see here. Uh, we're on a two-match winning streak. Hopefully we can keep that going. Oh, West Brom. We're at West Brom. So, yeah, good luck with all that. Uh, let's see. Wow. A lot of stuff going on, so. <laughs> Lots of stuff going on. Hey, my sister. My sister Kelly, my sister. She says, hi, everybody. Uh, just so she knows, I, I pulled the trigger on that ring today. But before I did, I had to drive to a town about 20 miles away where the only uh, jeweler's rings were at so I could size the ring. Uh, Terry Lawler says, our game's going ahead. I know Tottenham and Fulham was canceled. I think it just depends on the teams in question, but I think there is talk of suspending them. Uh, so, um, Thomas Hamilton says, your team will win tomorrow. I certainly hope so. I certainly hope so. I have to say, I have a, and I've had this for years and years and years and have never used it, but I have a leather wallet. Well, it's over there. I'd show it to you. I have a very nice leather wallet that I've had for, I don't know, probably eight years or so. And it's starting to get a little frayed and a little worn, and it's black. It was really nice when I first got. Nah, it's getting a little. So, I've had this one for a long time, probably for about seven years, and it is an Arsenal wallet. Okay. Now, when I ordered it, I thought it would be a lot nicer than it is. It's it's made of like a a synthetic fabric. It does have this zipper here, which is nice, you know. To, I guess if you want to put things in it, I wouldn't. Uh, it's got Velcro. See, I thought it was going to be like some nice leathery thing. Uh, it's got Velcro. And then on the inside, it's kind of like this is almost like raincoat material. Thin, thin, thin raincoat material. And this is uh, the same thing with a pocket. Of course, your money goes in here. Ha! <laughs> I don't use that very much because who use who carries cash anymore? And then I guess you push your license here in this. Uh, and I'm like, I don't even know if I want to use this. I really don't. There's another pocket here to put other things in, and I don't. It's just it's kind of chintzy. I wasn't real happy with the Arsenal people when I got it, but I suppose I could be prevailed upon to use it. But I've had it for a long time. They may have a new Arsenal wallet for sale now. I don't know. I I, I could find out, I suppose. Um, Terry Lawler says, Did you get it from China, Tom? Actually, it came from... 
um, the Arsenal store from eight years ago or so or whatever. So you'd have to ask the Arsenal store. Let's see, Arsenal, whoops, uh, Arsenal wallet. It says, I'll just look at the one on Amazon. Oh, $45. There's a $29. I don't see the crappy one that I have on here anywhere. I'm going to go to the official Arsenal FC crest embossed. Well, this one here is just brown. It's not... I don't see a big... Oh, that's got the old school, like the super old Arsenal logo on it. Here, here $29. Official Arsenal... FC. See, that's not. I don't even like the picture on that. It doesn't. I'm going to go to the Arsenal store. Uh, I'm going to have to go to the Arsenal store. I don't trust any of these Amazon Arsenal.com. I'm sure that'll get me there. Um, Randy Ramos says Chef is in the house. I, I, folks, I am so tired. Uh, I really wasn't tired doing Tomathon last night, but man, oh man, I, I stayed up way too late afterwards. I did a bunch of stuff, I and and today I am just wrecked. Mm. A lot of it's drink drinking tons of Red Bull and coffee, um, probably. Terry Lawler says, to be fair, normally these merchandise are made up from top stuff and not flimsy crap. Yeah, I know. That's why. I, uh, here we go. There's a hey, 50% off. Um, shop the sale. I'll do that. 50% off. Fitty. Fitty. Let's just see here. Gifts and accessories. Would it be there? Uh, by pro. Oh, come on, man. We ship to the United States. You can easily shop now. Well, I would hope so. Uh, memorabilia. I don't need memorabilia. Uh, badges. Bags and wallets. Here we go. By product. Bags and wallets. When I, I don't believe I want any of the bags. Arsenal bruised banana billfold wallet. I remember that jersey. That's from back in the 90s. There's a leather card holder here. It's not doesn't have very much cork card holder. I don't need card holders. Um, Arsenal Heritage. That's the old Arsenal logo. That's all the way it is. Here's a here's a leather billfold large embossed. It's got the new logo on it, but I. I don't know. I don't. Embossed is nice, but I kind of want something that's got the uh, the actual badge on it. You know what I mean? Well, I guess that embossed one. I bet you it's way nicer though than the one that I have. It's twenty-two bucks, ninety with shipping from England. Let's see here. Okay. Well, that does look kind of nice. It's not, it's a bifold though. I like trifold wallets. Bags and wallets. I guess I'm just not, but it does have a lot of credit card places in it. So that's good. I wish they had a trifold. Let me see if they do. Sorry, folks. Oh, here's a leather tri. Oh, the trifold. That doesn't look like a trifold. And that's a heritage one with the. I don't want the old 1924 logo on it. Oh man. You can't always get what you want. Arsenal faux leather card holder. Those are those ones where you slip the stuff in and they have the clip on them. But if you try sometimes, you just might find you get what you need. Filter by 
shop by category. Ideal for men. Well, I've I've certainly fallen into that category. That leather card holder with the clip on it, I used to have, well, let's see, leather wallet and key ring set, but it's the Heritage Edition. Uh, bifold cork. I don't want cork. I want a trifold. I want a trifold. Like the one that I have now is a trifold. Well, they just, they don't have it. They simply don't have it. Um, yeah, normally this stuff is super nice. It's super high quality. Terry Lawler says, I have my dad's wallet. I never use it. It was made for him by a political prisoner here. When he'd done some work at the prison, one of a kind, and I'd hate to see it been too worn. Yeah, mine's, mine's just getting worn on the edges, you know, in the corners. And unfortunately, this one... Is it was good and sturdy and it's lasted a long time, but it's worn through the outer black layer of leather, so it's getting that where that white stuff is on the inside. So it's just not as cool as I liked. Um, man, I, I kind of wanted a you know men's trifold wallet leather. I'll bet you there's something here for me. And uh, wow, 450 bucks. How many languages does it speak? Okay, fossil. I had a fossil um, wallet for a long, long time. It was before I got this other one. I had it for ages. So fossil must make very good things, you know. Um, come on, load it up. Load it up, please. Well, if you're going to take that long, mark down from 54. I just want to have nice things. You know what I mean? I just want to be able to take it out after I go on a date with a girl and have her go, wow, nice wallet. There's the man for me. Like they do. Ooh, this one's great. Oh, it is. Man, is that great. I do kind of like the ones where the um, the see-through screen with your ID in it is in the middle. I just feel like it's more protected. But I guess if it folds over. Um, but this one's brown. And, of course, I require black. Let's see. Bifold. Trifold wallets. There we go. Come on. Trifold me up now. Wallets. I'll do it again. Fossil makes really good stuff. And I think their headquarters is in Dallas. I knew a bunch of people that worked there. Uh, Terry Lawler says, I believe, and don't quote me on this, but my brother tells me Liverpool wallets are made of sterner stuff. I did ask him, was it because they needed to be <laughs> for being from Liverpool? Well, the um, other than the crappy one I have here, uh, all these, these other Arsenal wallets look really like, you know, top quality, you know, really good stuff. You know, and to be honest with you, I don't remember. I could have bought it because it was on sale. That that would not be unlike me to do that. This one here says two colors. Well, that's kind of a cool brown one. Wallets for the man in your life. This one says two colors. Oh, maybe that's how many colors are available. 48 bucks. Well, let's check her out. Let's check it out, check it out, check it out. Personal shopping is here, virtually. Yeah, it's... it's I, I think, especially given, you know, I wear a lot of T-shirts and jeans and... A man should have very nice accessories. Uh, it doesn't cost a lot, but you should always have super good belts and wallet and keychain and uh, whenever possible shoes. The rest of it can look like crap. You know, well, 
Uh, but the, but all that stuff should be very, very nice. You know, because it doesn't... Uh, I mean, there's no... Uh, you know what I mean? Okay, here we go. Well, this one looks like the other one, only it's black. Colors. Why won't it tell me the color? I want the color. Tell me what color it is. It just shows me. It doesn't tell me. But that's 50 bucks. However, it should last you, you know, 10 years of your life anyway. And every time, oh, it says the prime. Oh, that's the, that's the brown one. I don't want to see anything about the brown one. I don't care for the brown one, you'll see. Uh, it should last you 10 years of your life. I don't know if you guys over in the UK have fossil products, F-O-S-S-I-L. They are generally extremely well designed. I don't know how my sister Kelly feels about fossil. I'm sure she knows them. They also make incredible watches. Uh, Randy Ramos says, Summer buys me my wallets every couple of years. Kind of fitting since she is spending my retirement fund. Yes, but if she's emptying the wallet, the very least she could do is to purchase you a new one. If she's rifling through it, uh, yep, primary color black. See, this is the one I would get. That's, that ain't bad. That one there, that ain't bad. It's called the Jesse Trifle. Um, yeah, it's too bad we don't have more chicks in the in the uh, room because uh, Fossil also makes great watches. They make some really superior watches. And I I have, you know what sucks? I have a watch. Here, this one is a digital, digital watch. It's called uh, uh, Expedition Indiglo. It's for being out in the sort of area that I'm in, mountains, things, working, whatever. And it's kind of indestructible. It lights up. Hold on, let me... It lights up. Um, I have another one, though, that is another expedition, but it's a regular, nice dress watch. And I'll be darned if the leather strap on it didn't break. And I got to now order another one from the company that sold it to me. It was not Fossil. Uh, you know what I mean? Because Fossil makes, oh, they make good stuff. It wasn't from a bad place. Oh, wow. Fossil's got a semi-annual sale going on. 50% off sale styles. Oh, men's washes on sale and clearance. I might as well. Let me check that out. You get yo. You guys got to check out these watches. Okay, so they're 143 bucks, 77 bucks, 99 bucks. Let's look into that 77 dollar one, shall we? Let me price these. Let me sort these uh, low to high. Let's see what happens. Oh yeah, nylon strap. We don't want nylon strap. Oh, these. Some of them look like old Swatch watches. Here's one, the Hutton. Three hand luggage leather watch. It is so classic. It's like this really cool blue with just white lines for the hands. I mean, for the hour marks. And uh, a nice brown leather strap. Here's another one the Luther three hand smoke. Oh, that's nice looking. 71 bucks. Uh, they got some nice watches. They sell some nice watches. Ooh, the Wiley Multifunction Luggage Leather Watch, 77. I know it's a lot to pay for a watch, but they do last forever. So you get something nice. You know, you got you, you can always go out and get a twist of flex, spice, but uh, My sister, Kelly, my sister. Um, she says, fossil watches for men are nice. I prefer more delicate-looking watches for women. Well, Fossil makes watches for women. You want the Baum and Mercier is what you want. Don't kid me for a moment. There we go. Fossil watches for women. Fossil ought to be paying me for some of this. You know what I mean? 
All right. JC Penny, kiss my ass. Uh, let's see. Ladies watch sale and clearance. Ladies. Oh, they've got ladies. Uh, some of these are not that delicate looking. I have to agree with you, Kelly. There's one here. It's called a Jacqueline. It's got a thin band, but it, I wouldn't, it's, it's on the road to delicate. It's definitely a cool watch. There's another one with faux cheetah hair on the, uh, on the band, which is, yeah, these don't look very delicate. You're, you're right. You're right. They're not, they're not that girly. I don't think. Uh, there's a couple of them with the thin... Oh, now this one. The uh, classic three-minute... I would say classic minute three-hand rose gold tone stained steel. Th that's girlish. That's very girlish. There's one here that comes with a bracelet set. I guess maybe you can accessorize with it. But yeah, they don't... Uh, overall, they're, they're not that... They're not that feminine. Maybe they're for, well, you know, the kind of girl that doesn't really want to look feminine. Um, Kelly says, I know Fossil makes watches for women. I like bracelet bands, not leather or thick chains. Yeah. They don't really have those. Fendi? And Baumercier, where you need to go for your watches, Kelly. Um, Terry Lawler says, a good watch is well worth the money. Not those fancy gold Ponce watches. Either leather strap or good rubber strap. Just something you can go fight the neighbors with. <laughs> Kelly says, I'm very girly. Fendi makes some. They're very expensive. I gave a Fendi watch. Well, didn't give it to her. I uh, I bought a Fendi watch for a girlfriend of mine that my sister knows that I was very enamored with for a long time. And it was a bracelet watch. It was a definitively a bracelet watch. Even Fendi's aren't that... Uh, you know, the one I got her was a bracelet, but, uh, let's see here. Let me see if I can look this up. I got it at a jewelry store and it was very expensive. Uh, let's see. R A C E L E T bracelet watch. Boom. Let's just see here. They've got a bunch of bracelets, but none of them are associated with the watch. I guess you'd have to look through them. The one she got was real girly, and it was very... Uh, well, the one that she received from me, it was very expensive. Super duper expensive. Yeah, those are... I wonder if Baumessier has the ones that I'm thinking of but yeah the one she got yeah uh, don't worry gentlemen i know what you're thinking tom got taken for a watch that cost four figures yes he did but she earned every penny oh here's one they have different different straps and some of the uh, straps are quite delicate. And uh, uh, yeah, some of these straps are real girly. Um, straps and wraps. So maybe that's the way they do it now. Or maybe that's just a style nowadays. Um, Baum Mercier watches for ladies. You always got to know how to get nice things for ladies. Buy watches for women. Baum Mercier, U.S. watch store. 
You've always got to know where the nice watches are for the ladies. Uh, Dolores Colbert is here. She's saying hi to everyone. Uh, Dolores, are you feeling better? Are you getting over your German jet lag? Das Deutsche jet lag. Well, even these Baum Mercier, maybe that's just the style nowadays, is for thicker watch bands for women. But I remember seeing a lot of very thin ones. Oh, here's some thin ones. Petite. Petit. Yeah, there's some there's some petite ones here. So they're uh but there's a lot of thick ones. They almost look like dude watches. I remember back in the day, back in my day, a lady's watch was hey was very ladylike. Little Jackie Kennedy clasp watch clasp. Uh, people wondering if uh, Dolores is feeling better. I'll be feeling better in an hour and 25 minutes. Incidentally, the great Nate will be joining us today. And uh, yes, we did have a Tomathon. I would call it a, a qualified success. I had a nice time. I think at least some of our guests did. Um, and then I uh, stayed up too late. So I am running on fumes. By the way, all day long, all I've been able to think about is, all is quiet on New Year's Day. For the wars we wage. I want to be with you, be with you, night and day. <coughs> I will be with you again. I will be with you again. Oh, dear. Yeah. Under a blood red sky, the crowd is gathered in black and white. Arms entwine the chosen few. <coughs> My voice is still shot. Newspaper says, says, say it's true, it's true. We can break through. Though torn into <coughs> I can't reach the high notes. Sorry for butchering that, Terry. I, I will begin again. Uh, I haven't been able to get it out of my head. Um, Dolores Colbert says, I had a dainty diamond watch given to me while a senior in high school. And she says she's much better. That's good. We like that. We like it. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just um, kind of... It, 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 does anybody else think it feels like a Saturday or a Sunday today? I do. And it's only... It's just a Friday. Um, things will start getting back to normal next week, which I will not enjoy. I uh, have done a good job of getting all the things done that I wanted to over the holidays, although I still have like one major project to do, and then I'm cool. And then I just have a couple little things I could do, but I don't have to do. Uh, Randy Ramos says, Cat just ran down the stairs again with your singing. Well, I can't help it if your cat's not cool. Um, my sister Kelly, I got to ask my sister Kelly a question. So... I guess it was, man, when was it? I could probably look it up and figure it out for sure. But it had to be, I'm going to say, three months ago. We went to one of these team building sort of uh, rah-rah motivational things. And I, those don't work on me unless they directly address specific 
behaviors by people specifically and correct them or deal with an actual real world issue specifically um and they made us draw a tree it was one of these things draw a tree i want the branches to be the things that you enjoy doing and i want the trunk to be the people and i want the roots to be okay so we all had to draw these trees now my sister kelly probably knows i can't draw at all so I'm already not excited about this. And they've got colored pencils and things and crayons and all this stuff. And I'm just like, man. Not only is this a worthless exercise, but I also have to do art things. So we all made them. And we put them up. And then you had to go around with three Post-its and put what you liked about three different ones and nobody put their names on them and then everybody had to go get theirs and they were like oh you know it'd be a really great idea if you put this up in your workspace it's like i'm not i wouldn't show this to a kid with no arms you know i mean i this is the worst artwork in the world first of all and second of all it doesn't i'm not going to gaze up longingly at that and get motivated by it you know, oh, the the turd from down the hall is still being a turd. That picture hasn't changed anything. Well, flash forward to this morning. Where is it? I'll even get it out here. Um, people talking to each other. Hopefully they're listening to my story. Otherwise, this is a fruitless endeavor on my part. So flash forward to this morning. Now, please keep in mind... We're on vacation for the holidays, but we get I get this thing that says, if you see this by Monday morning, please bring your tree picture with you to the Civic Center. See you on Monday. My tree picture was in the trash 30 seconds after the event ended. I don't think, uh, I'm not going to that thing. I'm not going to another rah-rah. Just not. I'm not doing it. My sister Kelly, my sister says, so you drew a dead tree with a person hanging from it to mess with them. Well... I don't know that you could have told whether my tree was alive or dead to begin with. So it could have been a dead tree. And I didn't draw a person hanging from it because like, the best I could have managed that was like hangman. No, I, I just I drew a bunch of happy crappy and got it over with. But I certainly, I threw it away almost immediately. I mean, seriously. I was like, I wouldn't put this up in my office for a million dollars. Not for a million dollars. So I, I'm not even going to that thing tomorrow, Monday. I just am not going. I, I don't, I've never responded well to those motivational things, you know. Those, let's gloss over the actual real problems that you might have with a person or the system or methodology or whatever. It's like, Okay, why is being a sunbeam a good thing? Being a sunbeam? Inch by inch is a cinch. Yard by yard is hard. Oh, my God. Be on time. Work hard. Do what you say you're going to do. Those are the three rules I had for all my employees. If you do those three things, we're not going to have a problem and you're going to thrive. Not just with me, but in the world. Um, Terry Lawler says, is there any point in team building or is it just a money earner for someone else? Well, that's another thing. 
So they're bringing somebody in from out of town to motivate us. Yeah, you want to motivate me? Uh, my sister Kelly, my sister Kelly, was, was a tree supposed to say something about you or inspire you? It was supposed to answer the question, why? Why do we do what we do? And I was like, man, if you don't know that, shouldn't be here. You know, we're helping you find the why of what you do. I don't need any of your help on that. Really, I need the, uh, a little bit of help knowing your why, because I can't figure out why the hell you do anything that you do. Um, Dolores said she's part sunbeam, part catwoman. Glasgow still here. Sing it out to him. Yep. Dolores says everyone knows Lynette Miller motivates you, doesn't she, though? Um, last night, I was in this uh, Zoom chat with a whole bunch of comedians from Los Angeles. And uh, the moderator of that went around and said, hey, what, 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 let's get everybody pumped up. Let's everybody tell what they would like to see happen uh, or what they'd like to achieve or accomplish in uh, 2021. And I don't have a problem with that. Goal setting. I think tangible goal setting is good. And um, when they got to me, I said, I hope I'm not forced to accomplish anything next year. Uh, I'm sick of accomplishing things. I'd like to see some of the people around me accomplish something. That's what I want. Got big laughs, but I was being serious. Uh, Terry Lawler says, my motto was always come in on time, take your time, go home in time. Yeah, that's not bad. Be on time. Work hard. Do what you say you're going to do. People that are late infuriate me. People that are lazy infuriate me. And people that don't do what they say they're going to do. Ooh, that third one. You want to get run over by the steamroller at work when you're working for Tom? Try that one. Just once or twice. See what happens. Cindy, didn't you say you were going to have those drawings done today when we came in here? Well, I know. I just got so busy. And I, ah, 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 ah. Who knows Cindy's schedule better than Cindy? Nobody. If you can't get it done in time, don't say you're going to get it done in time. You could have told us it was going to be tomorrow. Nobody would have said a word. Instead, we're here, we're waiting on you with those drawings, and you don't have them done. So we can't move forward. So all six people in this room really don't need to be here, do we? Thank you. Thank you for shooting another torpedo into the hull of the SS Gully. We're now listing to one side trying to bail out water in the middle of that's the goofy guy if you heard that did you guys hear that that's more of the goofy guy right outside the door Let's see if we can hear some more here Hopefully he's having a fatal stroke. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear that or not. I wonder if Santa bought him some more pit-stained, oversized, ripped-up um, wife-beater t-shirts and sweatpants for Christmas. You just, you just want to see magic at Christmas. Um, Doris Colbert says, people that do a bad job also infuriate me. 
bilge pump, please. I don't know what that means. So yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was great news. I'm not going to that thing on Monday. I'm not going to it. I'm not. Oh, I know I got a bunch of stuff to do on Tuesday, so I'll I'll do that. But hmm. It's weird because last Christmas I went to Dallas, hung out with Kurt Connor and his wife for the whole vacation, and it seems like that vacation lasted over the holidays way longer than this one. This one just feels like there was nothing to it. Terry Lawler says, like those receptionists at the doctor's surgeries who ask you when you ring in for an appointment, what's wrong with you? For Jesus' sake, if I knew that, I wouldn't be looking to see a doctor. That's the truth. Yeah. I was with a friend of mine. I took him uh, to, the, to the doctor. He said, can you drive me to the doctor? My car's in the shop. I said, sure, I'll come get you, so... I drive him to the doctor, and uh, I asked him if he wanted me to wait in the car. He goes, no, 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 come on in. Who knows how long I'll have to wait in the waiting room. Why not? We keep each other company. So I, I go in with him. He walks up to the receptionist, and uh, he says, uh, Hello, I'm Mr. So-and-so. I'm here for my 9 o'clock appointment. And she said, Well, how are you today, Mr. So-and-so? And he went, I have a hemorrhoid. How are you? <laughs> the look on her face. Uh, well, I guess I'm better than you are. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah, so I'm, it's, I was interested in uh, my sister Kelly's opinion, being a psychologist, a senior lecturer. Um, just exactly, I'm kind of immune and always have been to a lot of managerial tactics. Uh, if you want to sit down with me and go, Hey, what's the thing you struggle, struggle the most with, or what's the thing that if you could get it solved would make you more efficient or more happy or more whatever. Hey, I'll do that with you all day and I will bear my soul and I will commit to a forward path of progress, man. If you want to get me and and do that, Tony Robbins crap, uh, uh, it ain't gonna happen. I'm gonna just just glaze over immediately. And then I'm going to begin to resent the fact that I have to sit through it. I'm very, 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 very quickly, as a matter of fact, gonna, you know, resent that. Terry Lawler says, uh, oh, I already read that. But I'm sure in her many psychological studies over the years that uh, she's encountered people like myself maybe not maybe i'm a class on my own but i doubt it uh i doubt it because i don't believe in that kind of statistical you know coincidence and i also know a lot of other people like myself <laughs> oh dear by the way have i mentioned i am the only certified stone green host Green rated for life by the NEAS Institute, who rates their host from red, which means bad, orange, which means meh, or green, which is the top ranking for a talk show host. And I, of course, have been rated green for life. I can never, ever, excuse me, ever lose that designation. Yeah, Red Bull and coffee. Belchy? Colon blow? No, why would you think that? Uh, Terry Lawler says, the doctors and reception ask, what's wrong with you? I says, it's my, I can't say that. Uh, it's my Johnson. She says, can't you see 
that here you can't she she said you can't see that here so i said it's my ear she said what's wrong with it i said i can't pee through it <laughs> yeah there's always a way around it there's always a way around it. so mm. but i'm not going to that thing i'm just not Wait, it isn't it isn't news time. Come on. I got where is there a better is there a better uh, No, actually there isn't unless I want to use that. This is a very special episode of the Tom Gully show After Dark. Boy, did we have a very special episode of the Tom Gully show After Dark yesterday. Some weird person, like, uh, put a comment on last night's show and a link to when it, when, you know, past the opening. It starts at 544. Their name was E. Matcher or something like that. I'm like, that's creepy. That's weird. I don't know you, so I removed it. I'm like, what are you doing with that? That was creepy. That was weird. I didn't appreciate it. Cre creepy, weird person. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. So um, hopefully everybody's having a really great 2021. Lynette Miller says, afternoon all. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Lynette. Lynette, I am, I am one tired guy. I am all shagged out from a prolonged squawking yesterday. But I'm still drinking coffee and Red Bull like an idiot. But uh, I am beat. The great news is that the great Nate will be joining us in about 14 minutes. And he'll help me limp through the program today. My sister Kelly says, I detest business buzzwords or motivational activities. Make me guess three things I have in common with a coworker, and I am out the door. Yeah. Well, the business buzzwords... I'm sure you're uh, familiar, Kelly, with the uh, concept of official style. That's when you get something that's in a um, memo or a business communication that's like, uh, we at this time, blah, blah. It, it's called official style. It, it's writers hate to have to write in official style. It's like, uh, and it's got buzzwords in it. And it just makes you want to poke your eyes out. There we go. Yeah. Well, I, I told I told somebody that's in a position of authority that I would not be attending that event. And they said, well, you're cordially invited. I'm, I'm not going to be at that. I may go do other stuff. I mean, I got tons of other stuff to do. Um. Lynette Miller says, I am tired and can, I can only imagine how you feel. Yeah, and I'm going to be tired when I kick things back into gear here after this weekend. Mm. I was remarkably not tired all during the program last night. And Lynette, I very much enjoyed talking to your father. You know. I felt we got along famously, but I didn't want to blow it by asking for permission to court you. You mind if I court your daughter? Like <laughs> in a Civil War movie or something. Oh, dear, dear, dear. <laughs> oh, dear me. What do we got here? Two minutes till network? Just the two minutes. No filter Paul was fun. We may need to have him in more often, probably. Uh, it's particularly good to have him in when you're not on network, so he can use the language that he, well, that he uses. Agonist Revival tried to besmirch Elvis Costello on the show last night. I think I was a little rough on him, but come on, man. It's my show. 
My sister Kelly, my sister, she says, uh, the program last night was great. I better check out and make dinner for my boys. Bye, all. They're not making dinner for themselves yet? What? You guys don't have a microwave? It's not popcorn night? You haven't put a big giant sheet on the floor? <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, and that says, oh, he had fun. He thought we were just speaking on the phone. He had no idea that we were live. Well, you should have told him. I. It's not my responsibility. Hey, bye, Kelly. Happy New Year. Tell everybody I said Happy New Year. Yeah, tell everybody. Tell everybody that talks bad about me behind my back that uh, that I said Happy New Year. Yeah. Do that. 30 seconds till network. And the great Nate at 10 after, who will drag me across the finish line of this uh, very tired New Year's Day. Oh, how about those Ball State Cardinals, huh? All right. We've got 10 seconds until it's time to rock and roll. So why don't we kick back, relax? Why don't we light this candle? Tom Gully rides the waves Like a social airplane And you know that he Soon he'll be far away And we'll have to run this race As long as we should never underestimate Someone who knows his place Unlike Tom Gully Ooh, such a little flame That is Tom Gully Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. What is your motto here? Boys, inform on your classmates. Save your hide. Anything short of that, we're going to burn you at the stake? Warriors, come out to play. Oh, you all talk big, but who here has the guts to stop me? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? Ladies and gentlemen and children of all ages, prepare for entertainment. It's time for the Tom Gully Show. And now, here he is, a very special man, Tom Gully. That's right. I am a very special man. I am so special. I was invited to a motivational speaker session. Yeah, because I love that. Say, thanks for watching us live on YouTube. You could have found out about it on the Tom Gully Show Facebook page, SonicAsylumRadio.com's Facebook page. Or you might just be listening to us. Nothing wrong with that at all. You could be listening to us on KCTKRadio.com. RawTalkOnline.com, Midnight Joker Radio at Live365.com, and of course, the ever popular Tomorrow Radio out of Dublin, Ireland, as well as iHeartMedia and uh, other places. You know, as always on this program, you can call in at any time with any topic, any question, or any subject, including but not limited to automotive, lawn and garden, home improvement, personal relationships, and of course, the ever popular hygiene. Trolls are welcome on this program, as well as good, loving people like yourself. You know, all you got to do is call the number at the bottom of the screen, 817-522-3948. And if you're listening, that number once again is 817-522-3948. The great Nate will be joining us in just a little while. Stories, yes, we've got them. We're going to tell you fireworks kill people. And that's what they did last night because uh, people set them off for New Year's Eve. Uh, we're going to tell you about cars that everybody hated, and we'll tell you about five burger chains that declared bankruptcy last year. Oh, yeah. And now, before we get to the wonderful people in our chat room, musical fanfare. Boy, that's top quality fanfare. As always, we have the finest human beings in the history of mankind on Earth in our YouTube chat room. We've got Dolores Colbert, 
International Woman of Mystery. Jean Dark is here. Would like to know my favorite serial killer. I don't think I have a favorite serial killer. Um, nobody really springs to mind. Uh, Thomas Hamilton from Glasgow, Scotland is here. He's a great lad. He's one of our mates. Randy Ramos, the chef himself, is with us. Ms. Lynette Miller, who, you know, turned over her title as Ms. Tom Gully Show 2020 last night at midnight Pacific time, and is now the reigning Ms. Tom Gully Show 2021 for the remainder of the year. She's with us. My sister, my sister Kelly, my sister. I uh, was in the chat room. Hey, Tyler Schoenberger in the house. I didn't see that a little earlier. Sorry about that, Tyler. Terry Lawler from across the pond over there in Ireland has joined us. Good to see him. And uh, is anybody else? Uh, there's other people, maybe. Like I said, I think the great Nate will be joining us in about five minutes. And so um, I, I need that. I need Nate to to hit me out, to hit me, hit me, so I can get through this show, because I'm really tired. I do not have a favorite serial killer. I don't know if I'm supposed to or not. Um, let's see here. Lynette Miller says, hi, Terry. Terry is a guy. It's the guy, Terry, with a, a Y. Um, I'm trying to think. If I have a favorite serial killer, I really don't think that I do. Mm. Fictional one, Dexter. There, happy. Uh, Terry Lawler says, "I'm the king of Ireland, Tom, and I'd like to be addressed as such. It's my island." All right, I will from now on. When I see you in the chat room, uh, I'll say we have with us Terry Lawler, the king of Ireland. The king of all the Emerald Isle. You got it, my man. I'll call you anything you want within reason. I'm not going to go crazy with it. We had a wonderful time last night at the first annual Tomathon. Eight plus hours of top quality original entertainment, guests, and spectacular good times. I have learned that um, drinking a huge amount of coffee and Red Bull for eight hours and just a little bit of Irish whiskey, very expensive Irish whiskey, uh, is a major colon blow. And I've been tired all day. I watched um, Favorite Equals Most Interesting One to Watch a Documentary About. I, you know. Uh, BTK, there, happy? Um, let's see here. Yeah, I, I watched Weird Science. I have the uh, DVD. I watched that. It took me back. Um, uh-oh. Got more goofy guy noise. I just wish he'd fall over off his stool and bang his head. Yeah. Got to talk to uh, Lynette twice. She was on the very beginning and very end of the show. And uh, we had a nice little talk with her father uh, as well. So that was, oh, it was fabulous. It was fabulous. It was fabulous. I ordered my college ring today. I had to drive 20 miles away to get my, my finger sized. Uh, and it was the exact same size as I thought it was going to be. And uh, talked to a nice lady at the store. And then I felt like I needed to buy something. Because you know, I was just there to put my finger through a, a thing. So within six weeks, I'll be sporting that baby. huh? How about that? That's my Christmas gift to myself this year. I would have done it even if Ball State hadn't destroyed San Jose State last night. Gene Dark says, I watched the Iceman one today. Hours of him describing murders, pure dead fan face. Well, the Iceman, yeah, he was a serial killer, but he was kind of more of a hitman. 
Uh, Lynette Miller says, oh, you found a sizer? Here's what I found. I not only found the big ring with all the ring sizes on it that you put your thing on, I f they also had the thing you slide rings down onto. So I measured the one and I said, I think this is the size I need. And then she took several different rings and slid them down on that tapered metal thing and would take ones off that were my size. Because her rings were all authentic uh, Native American. So, and I wouldn't buy in any of that. Not that there weren't some cool things there, but I know what I want. My ring's got the degree I had on one side panel, and then it's got my soccer thing with my name on it and a shoe and a ball or whatever. And then it's got my birthstone, and under the birthstone is the Ball State sports emblem. So, we'll, uh, I can't wait for that. I got to forget that I ordered it so I don't anticipate it too much. You know what I mean? I got to completely forget that I ordered it. Um, that way it'll be a surprise. Like Christmas. Uh, let's see here. It's 10 after. Maybe I should call the great Nate. I'll tell you what, I'm going to call the great... Oh, nope, I don't have to. There's the man himself right there. Incoming call. Incoming. Let's see if we jump right in. Is this the great Nate? No, it's doing the thing. I got to start before the show starts calling myself so that I make the first call so that the first call isn't one of these long drawn out. Well, like it's doing now. I did that yesterday for the uh, Tomathon. I forgot to do it today because I'm tired. I'm just so tired. You know what I need? I need a back massage and a, well, that's where it would start anyway. Is this the one, the only, the often imitated, never duplicated, great Nate? Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. How are you doing today on this New Year's Day? Uh, pretty good. You know, uh, this year uh, is uh, hopefully going to be the stepping stone back to reality. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, it was funny, you know. Yesterday, I heard a lot about rock bottom. Everybody's like, well, we at least this is rock bottom. The thing that people that know rock bottom truly do know there's no such thing as rock bottom. No. Yeah. <laughs> there, there is a such thing as a rock lobster. But yeah. Not, not rock bottom. Speaking of lobster, man. Yeah. I was watching this documentary, right? Yeah. And fed uh, these itty-bitty lobsters uh, a piece of watermelon. And they loved that, okay? They loved it. Yeah. And, and, and it was funny because you could see the little, the little guys filling up with, with watermelon. <laughs> Interesting enough, though, they, they just took the red part and left everything else behind. So it was like a white piece of watermelon when when they were done. The rind. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. yeah. That's that's what I do. Yeah. So I mean, you just you. I mean, you. I I don't know how 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 you just go for for the red stuff, you know. Yeah. And leave leave a husk behind. I oh, I always leave yeah. the the husk behind. Um, Gene Dark says he's feeling Nate tonight. Ask if he's doing a Kip impression. No, he's not. I don't even know what that's. That's not even realistic. Uh, Dolores Colbert says, "What size were you, Tom? I was a uh, size ten. Size ten. Um, yeah. Well, I've heard Nate that all is quiet on New Year's Day." 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's too bad because I want, I want to be next to you. Yeah. Next to you. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, well, I will be with you again. I will yeah. be with you again. Um, yeah. It's... Uh, yeah, hopefully everything will start getting slowly back to normal uh, this year as soon as possible. And uh, yeah, at least here, here's one thing I would, an olive branch I would throw out. At least you're in DFW. True, uh, true. You know, that's such an yeah. awesome, it's such an awesome place. It really is. I miss it so much. I really do. Well, it, we miss you, Tom. Yeah, and the whole town is crying out for for my return. For Tom's old. Yeah. Tom, uh, Tom, every day. Yeah. Every day. Dolores Colbert says uh, to Terry Lawler, you can call me queen as Morty has dubbed me the queen of international affairs. Um, I I refer to uh, Dolores as international woman of mystery. By the way, it was very nice having your, your daughter on the show last night. Oh, thank you. She, she was ecstatic. To, you know, it's so funny because she was looking. I had said, you know, that might be a possibility, honey. Uh -huh. You know, I, I never, because you never know mm -hmm. live. Mm -hmm. And so when the other gentleman came on, I knew it's a no go. You guys go somewhere else, you know, no. because it's you know. But then whenever you know, homeboy was uh, you know nutsy, and so uh, <laughs> I was like, hold on, man, we're making a a little girl cry, and we can stop it right now. Uh, so you know. And, and I so appreciate your time. I thought she did. Yeah. I thought you guys just bailed on that, but um, no, she was a sweetheart. She sounded great. It was, unfortunately, oh, yeah. uh, uh, she realizes you have a show, right? I mean, she she could be on your show anytime. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. That's uh, you know. That's... Well, I was actually actually in that new format. Yeah. Uh, I, I but see, I don't. The one thing I don't know is if she's dedicated enough to sit just sit down and talk with me uh, you should have her do some even even 10 minutes you should have her do some show opens for you yeah that's what i was gonna do for sure yeah and you know she she is the voice the 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 on the hour voice of midnight joker oh that's when cool she comes on and that's does cool. uh, uh radio tags for me oh that's awesome that's very cool yeah i, I it, it's great because, like, as a father, I'm, I get to listen to my kid's voice while I'm at work. Uh, Terry Law says, you got it, your majesty. Gene Arc says, Nate's sounding kind of very kippy. Hey, Gene. Didn't learn the first time? <laughs> Just asking, bro. He didn't sound anything like Kip. I'd be the first one to say so. It doesn't. Sorry. So keep pushing it. See what happens. <laughs> keep pushing it all right it's time to do the news uh oh, I, I i guess some people for did not hear the opening of last night's show but we're we got a little different attitude here in 2021 uh let's see here let's get the news going uh the award-winning tom gully show news team and here we go whoa 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 i didn't put up the right art card there we go uh here we go uh, let's get ready to rumble! Oh, yeah. That's right. It's time for the news. Uh, let's see if I oh. can get through this news. Hey, you know, Nate, um, did people in your neighborhood set off fireworks last night at midnight? They did! And, and you, know, you know how deaf I am, Tom. Yeah. And so my wife was coming and she's like, I bet the fireworks were pretty annoying. And I was like, what are you talking about? And then I realized, oh, that's what everybody was saying. <laughs> what is that noise make? And, what is and, you know, um, I'm, I mean, I, you know, it's so funny. One thing I love to do is this, is, is exactly 
you know, talk to people and all that. But my hearing, I mean, everything on my on my end is turned up a hundred percent for me yeah. to hear this. Yeah, you know, and it's, it's so. But anyway. What is exciting in the news? Well, I just brought up the fireworks because uh, I always say after a big holiday, we're always going to have stories of people being killed with stupid activity. And <coughs> uh, a man in eastern France was killed when a New Year's Eve firework exploded after he went back to inspect it, while another man was killed by a homemade firework in neighboring Germany. 25-year-old died instantly in the incident in Bufsheim, Bufsheim, close to France's eastern border with Germany. Another man was treated for facial injuries after the firework exploded as they were inspecting it. The regional government had banned fireworks for New Year's Eve and a nighttime curfew was in place to dissuade people from gathering in public during the coronavirus pandemic. In neighboring Germany, police said a 24-year-old man died after lighting a homemade firework in Ritz Neundorf, about 20 miles southeast of Berlin. Police said Friday the explosives experts found several more unused devices in the vicinity. Germany banned the sale of fireworks this year to deter gatherings and cut down on the large number of serious injuries that clog up hospitals every New Year's Eve. So... Do you ever do you ever have, do you ever have somebody you know injured by a firework? Neighbor kid, somebody. Oh, well, and unfortunately, there 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 was I I have, I mean I've I've shot a fire I mean a fire a bottle rocket fell over once. Yeah. And shot close I mean close to a lot of people in a building. It was really interesting. I couldn't believe it went through the mesh, like the metal mesh. Yeah. But uh, I'll, that was when I was a kid. Now. Um, maybe about five years ago, a little bit more, maybe, uh, no, I'm old. Anyway, uh, one time I had a firework that had a top, uh, which was a mortar or whatever they call them. So, but you didn't need a cannon to, to, to shoot it. It was a bottle rocket, but it was such a big thing. I was like, well, man, I mean, this thing's huge. I'll just stick it in the ground because I don't have a bottle that will hold it and light it and then, you know, go. Uh, I, so I lit it, and then I'm watching, I'm watching, and then I start noticing that it's not going to lift off because it's in the ground too good. And so the next thing you know, I'm running, and I'm in the middle of this big ball of of like you know a firework ball it was beautiful and scary all at once you know so yeah but and and and, you know any i mean homemade ones man uh uh-uh you know that's that's like the kid you know or whatever I can't, you know, you can't, you can't play with the money maker, man. No. So if you lost your face to a firework, you know, it's that's your own just, fault. That, yeah, that's kind of a dud, man. It's yeah. like, hey, what'd you do? I shot off the firework and I took my nose out. <laughs> Randy Ramos says, "Time yeah. for Jesse. Say good night, Gracie. Everyone, good night, Gracie. Good night, Gene Dark. Hey, Gene. Um, it does say trolls welcome." Uh, it does not say assholes welcome. And it also says the Tom Gully show. So what I say goes here, goes here. And I was nice about it. Gave you another chance. You don't deserve one. So hasta la vista. Have a nice life. Um, let's see here. I, I told you. Somebody, some people didn't listen to the opening of last night's show. When I was like, hey, we're, we're done with this democracy crap uh, well remember remember when gene dark and i got got up yesterday and did all that prep invited all those guests to be on my show for eight hours? oh no he didn't do any of that not one drop hasn't really done anything so all right hey um we asked a bunch of people yesterday about what kind of cars they had 
back in the day. Mm -hmm. Well, here's the cars that everybody hates. These are cars that everyone hates. Um, well, the first one's probably the, you know, the biggest example of a car that just didn't do it for any way. And that's the Ford Edsel. Remember, remember that one, the Edsel? Uh, Ford came out with this new car. They, oh, the Edsel. It's going to be the greatest thing ever, greatest thing ever. And they lost $350 million on it. And that was back in 1960. So, um, oh. Yeah. Oh, man. This one here is called yeah. the Amphicar. I've actually seen some of these in operation at lakes and stuff. The Amphicar was a dual-purpose vehicle. It was a car on land, boat in the water. President Lyndon Johnson owned one, uh, but the clunky, cumbersome amp uh, Amphicar didn't impress many drivers, and uh, they expected to sell about 20,000 of them annually, and only 400 of them were actually ever built. So, yeah. A true uh, Tucker story, huh? Yeah. The <laughs> Triumph TR7. Everybody at my high school wanted one of these. I thought they were cool. Um, advertises the shape of thing to come. The wedge-shaped TR7 was distinctive. Uh, it was a quality control inspector's nightmare. It dribbled oil. The retractable headlights got stuck. The roof leaked. And... Uh, <laughs> One of the, one former owner said the best two days in the life of a Triumph TR7 owner were the day you bought it and the day you sold it. <laughs> What's the worst car you ever had? What's like the car that just was a curse mobile or whatever? Well, I was you know in high school, um, I had a I had some gearhead buddies that that liked to uh, like. Tinker on your Malibu car. Malibu or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I So I go out and I got in my brain and I find a uh, Buick Skylark 1972. Oh, boy. Mustard yellow with the original black. Uh, Upholstery? Whatever. Leather. It wasn't leather. Yeah. What it, on the roof, you know? Oh, okay. And... You know, it was this boat of a car that I paid too much for. And I paid like a thousand dollars, but I you know, I tried to haggle the guy down, he's like, Well and, and I totally got taken. But that's okay because I had it for probably well, two years and then the year it died, um it was very crazy. It through a rod and blood to death. Well, I had a... I think it was a 94 Ford Ranger. It was cool because it was the last year of the boxy style rather than the rounded. So it was kind of cool looking. A lot of people would mm -hmm. wanted it and stuff like that. But it, um, a friend of mine did re refer to it as a curse mobile. Because it, <laughs> it 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 had all these problems, and then finally a transmission problem, and I just said forget it. Uh, Randy Ramos, not sorry, uh, Terry Lawler says, didn't Wheeler dealers restore one of those Amphi cars on their TV program? Yeah, a lot of people have, have restored them. The DeLorean, the Back to the Future car, um, with yeah. the, the gull wings. Um, only 8,300 of those were ever built. Uh, I've heard that that car was far ahead of its time. But uh, the Cadillac... Uh, the Cadillac well, Go ahead, sorry. Uh, no, I, I, uh, from what I understand, a company picked up... The, they had like a bunch of parts left over from the 80s for, mm -hmm. for the De DeLoreans. Mm -hmm. and, you can, and they can still make them. And so this company bought the rights and will... Will make you up either a DeLorean or a Back in the Future DeLorean, whatever you mm -hmm. want. So I thought that that was interesting. That you know that uh, particular car. It, it what's funny is it's not the prettiest, you know. But at the same token, it's a time traveler, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. Like it, 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 how can you say no 
to a time traveling car. It was ahead or of at its least for It was ahead of its you know? it was ahead of its time, yeah. The Cadillac Cimarron. Um, uh, here's a recipe for disaster. Take a car platform shared with the compact Chevy Cavalier, throw in a leather interior and a few other fancy upgrades, give it the ridiculous name of Cimarron by Cadillac, then charge luxury car prices and persuade buyers it's a true caddy. Um, was on Time's list of 50 worst cars of all time, and they said that Cimarron remains Cadillac's biggest shame. Oh, the Dodge Rampage. It was kind of like an El Camino. It was like part truck and part car. Um, uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, I guess, yeah. I guess it had bad handling. The Renault Fuego. <laughs> Terry Lawler says, wasn't that the ultimate Coke dealer's car? The Renault <laughs> Fuego. Renault is hoping to light a fire under its rotten U.S. sales with the introduction of the Sporty Fuego. But America has always had a prickly relationship with the French, and the bloated hatchback left would-be buyers cold. Uh, At one point, the automaker had to recall some models because the car's steering wheel could fall off of the steering column. Oh, I knew a dude that owned one of these Sterlings. Uh, Yeah, yeah. Yeah, did you ever see a Sterling? It's like a, a British luxury car. Um, UK automaker Rover launched Sterling and uh, developed in tandem with Acura. Um, it, it had really bad quality control. Um, the burled walnut trim fell off like almost immediately. They only sold 2,000 of them. Um <laughs> Man, there's been some just rotten, rotten cars. The Plymouth. Yeah, Pro- my wife uh, has a has a personal deep hate for the PT Cruiser. Oh well, that gets me to the next one here because it's similar to the PT Cruiser. Terry Lawler says the Alfa Romeo Spider is the bee's knees. Tom, I used to have one in my youth. Yeah, that is an incredible car. <laughs> um. The Plymouth Prowler, 1997 to 2002. In the late 90s and early aughts, automakers were all about retro-inspired vehicles like the P2 Cruiser. But the success of VW's resurrected Beetle didn't translate to other throwback designs like the Prowler. Original, yes, but not really attractive. This aluminum-bodied two-seater came equipped with a trailer hitch in case buyers wanted to spend $5,000 for the optional trailers so they can fit more than a duffel bag in the car's tiny trunk. (laughs) It's a crappy car. Uh, Let's see if any of these other ones are screaming out at me here. See, I like the look of that car, though. I I mean... Yeah, it looks great. It looks great. It's just not... Ooh, Dolores Colbert says, First Year Nightmare, the 1975 AMC Pacer. You ever oh. see some one of those? It looks like a like a like a pregnant Chevette. It's <laughs> it's awful. And then there was the sh- the AMC Gremlin. The Gremlin the Gremlin looked like a car that was drawn by a kid in kindergarten. It was just a big square back and <laughs> It was, my dad had one. Um, he had a Gremlin, and uh, he had to have it serviced one time, and there was another car by AMC called the Hornet. And so he got to drive a Hornet around for a couple of weeks till his, his Gremlin was fixed. Gremlin had a problem because people would steal, was it the hubcap? Uh, not the hubcap. Was it the um, gas cap or the trunk <laughs> fastener? Because there was a gremlin on it, a gremlin symbol, and in in the in the hood, people would steal those and use them for belt buckles. His his gremlin. I walked by a gremlin today and got me a belt buckle. (laughs) Well, the gremlin, the gremlin also had a uh, slanted front windshield, and he came out. My dad uh, and found some kids sliding down it. 
It had sort of an extreme. <laughs> it was in the winter time. There was snow on his car. Dolores Colbert said, and I ordered, and I special ordered and waited six weeks for that lemon. Ooh. Oh, that's, that's, that's no that's good. Tangerine, man. Yeah, that's really <laughs> bad. You waited, for, you waited for it. Nate, <laughs> Nate, you and I are a couple of gentlemen that that like like ourselves a burger. Oh yes. Yes. Well, sadly, there are five burger chains. This first one we won't care about, but that have declared bankruptcy in 2020. It's was well, first one's called By Chloe, and it's a vegan burger, so that doesn't even count. Um, <laughs> yeah, that didn't count at all. Crystal Burger filed for bankruptcy in back in January, and was sold to an investment group. I guess they're still up and running. Ruby Tuesday. Do you enjoy a Ruby Tuesday? Uh, once. I mean, it's one of those things that I. It seems like it, it, it was almost like, uh, if I remember right, like a Jason's Deli but burgers. Um, it's Maybe. a it's a little nicer than that. It's kind of like almost a little bit on the Applebee's side. Um, yeah. Okay. See, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. I, I mean, I didn't remember. If it, I don't think there was waiters. If I remember, I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Know. There, there's waiters at Ruby Tuesdays. Uh, Terry Lawler says, do you remember the Alpha Sud? No. Uh, did you have that over there? My first car. I don't believe we did. Dolores Colbert says, my father warned me never buy a first year model car. Learn my lesson. Well, yeah, let somebody else experience all the, all the, uh, working out the bugs. Well, Ruby Tuesdays was known for its burgers and salad bar, but they filed for chapter 11 bankruptcy in October. And then the chain closed 150 locations during the pandemic so they have they have really good um they had really good burgers they were really good burger place npc international which owns wendy's uh wendy's didn't declare bankruptcy in 2020 but npc international which operates almost 400 wendy's franchise locations did file for bankruptcy um but that doesn't mean anything's going in there IHOP is not exactly a burger chain, um, because but they do sell a lot of burgers, and uh, their franchise. But the International House of Pancakes. Huh? I said I get this one because it's the International House of Pancakes. Yeah. Well, they. I, I mean, how are you gonna be like I've, burger? International. Well, uh, no, I've eaten a lot of burgers there, though. Um, they, oh, yeah, they, well, yeah, because there was an IHOP down from one of the places I worked, and we would go there for lunch, and so we'd get burgers. But um, they uh, have a holding company that filed for bankruptcy in May, and they've closed a bunch of locations. Well, those those aren't too bad. Those aren't, you know, we. You, I don't think you were on when we were talking about the fact that. Um, and Inspector Clouseau had a hornet. Enough said. Yes, he did. Um, we were talking about the fact that Texas Roadhouse was ranked the number one favorite sit-down restaurant in the United States. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've been to one. You know, I was uh, at one with you last Christmas. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. I, I so, enjoy the Texas Roadhouse. It's kind of weird to be at a Texas Roadhouse in Texas. I, I've always thought they should just call it Roadhouse in Texas. You right. know, you know, it's just it's just Roadhouse here. Um, the Texas is implied. Yeah, <laughs> and. <laughs> And if you've ever been to a real Texas roadhouse, not the, the, the chain, but a roadhouse in Texas, it's nothing like a Texas roadhouse. It's, it's, no. it's, it is a, it's, it's an aluminum warehouse building with tables and food. Um, I do like that all the Texas roadhouses have Willie's Corner. Do you know about that? 
What are they called? Willie's Corner. There's a place inside every Texas roadhouse designated as Willie's Corner. It just says in neon, Willie's Corner. And we all know who that's dedicated to, right? Uh, please enlighten. Willie Nelson. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Terry Lawler says, Dolores, I owe the fact that I gained my first ever girlfriend to that car. I owe the Italians a debt. Yeah, you may owe the Alfa Romero Italians a debt, but there's the other Italians that make the Fiat. You know what Fiat stands for, don't you? <laughs> no, no. Fix it again, Tony. <laughs> hey, fix it again, Tony. Yeah, the Fiat. <laughs> Not the greatest... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it runs off the gravy. You'll love it. Yeah. My yeah. grandmother made it, you know? Runs off a of sauce. Um, <laughs> so what's coming up for you in the uh, the very earliest part of 2020? Anything exciting? Well, um, I'm glad to say I still have some, some uh, regular vacation before I have to start up back at work or whatever. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I am going to be hanging a lot of new records I got from Christmas. And, cool. and I got on, I mean, they came in uh, frames. Yeah. And so I'm going to hang them up. But I got some really good stuff. Oh, awesome. So that, that's going to happen. I'm going to, oh, and I got the coolest thing, Tom was uh was the weird al yankovic flag i did see that posted on facebook it's like a che guevara or something flag only it's weird al yankovic oh yeah i mean it's just it's you know i can't wait i'm gonna put it up in the coffee area of my office very cool um lynette miller says i love my fiat pop sport uh, Terry Lawler says, or if you own a Ford, live on a hill. Um, well, Ford stands for effed up old rusted out Dodge. Um, let's see here. Uh, Lynette Miller. Uh, let me drive her RAV4 from uh, Woodland Hills. All the way into downtown, well, not downtown, downtown, but all the way down onto Wilshire in Los Angeles. Just sit here, take my car. You believe that? Letting me loose on those L.A. freeways? But I got to tell you, um, I know the L.A. freeways have huge traffic jams, and I think I got stuck in some mini ones, you know, like for five minutes, and then it cleared up. Uh, Lynette said my favorite car was my little Porsche. Oh, Lynette, you in a Porsche, be still my heart. Um, so I, I, I do have to admit that after driving in DFW in Dallas, Fort Worth, driving in Los Angeles, while exciting, it didn't like knock me over or anything. You know what I mean? All right. I had, I had a red four one and, uh, I was I, in I it. I was, head. I was in it. Yeah. 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 A nice yeah. car. A nice car. It was, it was, and and uh, but then I got me a uh, a cord. That's you know, and that's what I've been rocking with since. I have a, a Nissan um, GXE, a Nissan Sentra GXE is what I have with a stick shift. Oh, I'm not, yeah. not crazy about, but. Um, Terry Lawler says Henry Ford's an icon here in the Emerald Isle. Was he Irish? Or? Dolores Colbert says, love my 61 Austin Healey bug eye Sprite, even though it would vapor lock whenever it felt like and leave me at the side of the road. I, well, I wouldn't love that at all. The best car I ever owned, and I never, ever, ever should have gotten rid of it, was an 84 Mercedes 300 SD Turbo. Oh, did I love that car. And when I moved to New, you know, up to the East Coast, I knew it wouldn't start 
Um, Tyler Schellenberger says, I can't hear him. I don't know. I think everybody else can hear him. Um, I don't... Uh, the, the Mercedes was a diesel, so it wouldn't start up in that cold weather, and I got rid of it and ended up moving back to Dallas, and that's when I met you after that and uh, bought Dave Michaels' uh, Ford Ranger off him. Um, but uh, never should have got rid of that car. It'd still be running. And I got it in 2000, and it was mint. It was just an incredible car. Um, just an incredible vehicle. I, I, I probably, one of these days, will go buy another old German, either a Beamer or a Mercedes. Just, they run forever if you uh, maintain them. And uh, certainly down there in Dallas, it's not like being in oh, yeah. it's not like being in Florida where the salt and all that in the air are gonna just corrode and everything. No, it's like having your car in a humidor. Uh, Dolores Colbert says, "I learned to just get out and calmly smoke a cigarette and get back in, and she'd start right up." Well, if you got the time, but it was a big four door Mercedes. Oh, it was great sunroof. It was. I loved that car. Loved it. And I had it for a long time, too. It was just incredible. Did you have a name for her? Yep. I certainly did. It was Carl Heinz. This is Carl. Oh, yeah? This is Carl Heinz, my Mercedes. Yes, because it was a... It was a Mercedes that I don't know how it happened. I never found out, but it was a from Germany. So all of the instructions for the radio <laughs> and everything were in German on it. <laughs> you know, anything that was on the dash or whatever, they were all the all that stuff was in, in German. So it was Karl Heinz. Uh, only problem I ever had with it was one time the vacuum line went bad. And uh, it vacuums the fuel away from the diesel engine. So when you would turn it off, the engine would keep running. So you had to pop the hood. And there was this big red button uh, that said Halton on it. And you'd press this lever down and it would stop stop it. That went on for about two weeks before I finally got it taken care of. But... Um, yeah, it it was an amazing, amazing car. I loved it. I had I had a car that I kind of liked. It was a um, Bronco two four by four, so you could switch it from regular oh, yeah. to four wheel drive. But it it ended up having just evil transmission problems. My my thing about a car is if it starts having transmission problems, get rid of it immediately. It's never going to be the same, so just stop it. Now, if it's a stick shift and the gearbox has a problem or something like that, not a problem. That's not a big deal. But when an automatic transmission starts to go bad, just get rid of the car. It's not going to be worth it. Dolores Colbert says, that car and I had an understanding. Would never start again for my husband who would come out and beat on her two carburetors. I told him, relax, smoke a cigarette, she'll start. He hated that car because it loved me. Oh. That's a pretty complicated car relationship, if you ask me. Um, yeah. yeah. I'm just glad that, you know, one of the things that uh, I enjoy about owning uh, owning my house now yeah. is I love to park my car in the garage. And yeah. I never, I mean, as little as it snows and ices down here, but at least I never have to, I hate scraping my car. Like scraping the ice off and stuff. So I, I like going into a garage and it's already like, you know, it's a little cold, but it's not like butt ass. You know what I'm saying? Well, and also and, down there, you can get it out of the heat, so you're not getting into an oven. Oh yeah, that's, yeah. My car, I have to scrape almost every morning or knock snow off, but it's so small. I mean, it is a four door, but it's a Nissan Sentra. I mean, it's so small that uh, you know it's done in ninety seconds. The whole thing's scraped off, but it is a pain in the butt. But I have like an Olympic level competition scraper. <laughs> I got it given to me for Christmas, 
And it's like, yeah, I could probably take the paint off a stop sign with it. But I still can't I still can't believe Lynette Miller just goes, Oh, just take my car. Like, wow, you're I think I think girls are more uh, uh, th- that Mercedes that I had, I had it uh-huh. for I had it for fifteen years. Nobody ever drove it but me. Ever, it, I was the only person, and I think that's probably true of uh, every single car that I've ever. I can't recall. Maybe I let somebody move it once or something, but not the Mercedes, but other cars, I probably let them, let them do that. Um, but I very, no, I'll do the driving of this vehicle. Um, but I've had lots of girlfriends that have said, ah, here you go. Just, just drive my car. We go, we're going somewhere and they, you know, a long trip or something. Why don't you drive? Oh, okay. I'll drive your vehicle. Uh, yeah, I'll let my brother, uh, Ben, my younger brother, Yeah, I uh, drive my car when we go on road trips, man. Yeah. I trust him immensely. Um, me, uh, you know, I get sleepy. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, it's, it's best to, to not let Nathan at the wheel for too long. When I, was, when I was younger... I would go on these hellacious road trips and just, you know, strap myself in and I'm driving till this 18 hours is over. And at a certain point, I said, this is crazy. And I developed a system where I would only drive eight hours a day. That's, that's, that's enough. You know, I'd drive for two hours, pull over, gas up, go to the bathroom, drive two more hours, pull over, get something to eat, gas up, go to the bathroom, two more hours, you know, pull over, get some gas, go to the bathroom, and then two more hours, and then I'm stopping somewhere and spending the night and watching hotel TV and sleeping. Yeah, it's too bad, though, man. I mean... It's, you know, nobody, you really can't, tra- you, nobody can even travel within their little area, you know, or, or go. Um, I like to, you know, I, I like going to Airbnbs. Uh, they seem to, to be, uh, I don't know, I, I, it's the same route, the same cost, but you get a kitchen. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, Terry Lawler says the old Massey 365. What a head turner," said every farmer in Ireland. Are you talking about the Massey Ferguson, Terry Lawler? Because our family, we were farming in Indiana, had a Massey Ferguson, and oh yeah, yeah, yeah. People that from the city don't understand what a stud that makes you uh, when you have one of those. But uh, or a combine. Oh boy, you get a combine. You're the, you're the guy. But. Um, yeah, the, the the I I just like going to a Motel Six and ordering a pizza, you know, turning on Showtime and uh, Terry Larson. That's the one, Tom. Old Betsy. Yeah, we had it. We also <laughs> my grandfather had a Silver King, which is a which is a, a tractor from like the twenties or thirties that has like a metal seat with holes in it for big holes for air, you know, let the air, you know, Terry says she could purr that Massey Ferguson. Um, yeah, well, it's anyway. a lot better than the John Deere's today, man. Yeah. John, good yeah. John you have to, uh, most of those guys have to learn how to hack a computer to work. It. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, D, so what's, what's up for, uh, the great Nate's family in the coming week? Anything exciting? Well, I would say all the excitement has died down. Good. We are uh, we are going to have a boycott of candy in the house. You know, nobody needs it. It's there's no holiday coming up. We said, well, I guess you have Valentine's Day. Yeah, but you know. But really, that's the last candy holiday, hopefully. 
a little while. Yeah, till Easter. I've got. Look at this. I'm gonna put it on camera here. Um, of course, there's a delay, but look at this giant sack of candy that I got for Christmas. That none of it will be touched. I'm just not a candy person for the most part. <laughs> Who gave you all that? Various people for Christmas. Everybody gave out candy oh, yeah. and stuff. I gave out electronics. You know, um, that's just my thing. But uh, Lynette Miller said my most practical car was my champagne Chevy Suburban 2500. It was like an RV. Kids, dogs, hockey, basketball, ski gear. Don't forget soccer. Uh, we had a Suburban growing up because we had you know, six kids in our family. So, yeah, I, I well remember the Suburban, you know. Uh, it was quite a vehicle, quite a vehicle. So, well, okay, so you got your candy boycott going on. Um, got the candy boycott. Gonna, we're also going to, uh, we're, we're soon to have a new uh, dog, awesome. a little buddy. You know, that's and, great. Uh, we're going to help him and he's going to help me by walking me around for a little while. <laughs> Say, uh, have you seen the new Wonder Woman? Yeah. Did you like it? I did. I don't see the. I mean, I understand. I understand uh, the, the villain problem they had. Yeah. But at the same token, if you're familiar with Wonder Woman and Wonder Woman comics, it was on par with with storyline. Well, I think the first uh, the first Wonder Woman movie is the best DC superhero movie they've made, and and so I can't imagine that the the new one would be anything I wouldn't like. Terry Lawler says Tom gave out a VW Polo for Christmas and got Polo mints in return. Yeah. I gave out, yeah, but but yeah, I, I I'm glad you said that because I I will eventually probably buy that on DVD, and, I mean on uh, Blu-ray and uh, oh yeah, well, I, I, I think I, th is, I think people get way too critical about these superhero movies, man. Well, and the other thing is, it's because it's delayed. We, they already, I mean, you know, the movie industry, of course, as you know, uh, being yeah. uh, uh, an advertiser, man, that that, they're, that they build it up in a timely way. So we're at that peak, you release the film, and, you know, but now, like all DC films for 2021 yeah. will be shown on HBO Max this year. Yeah, I know. I know. And... And, you know, that's just amazing to me. But uh, the unfortunate thing is, you know, uh, you have between the DC and Marvel, Marvel now, owned by Disney, you know, has a fast track to whatever because, yeah. you know, I mean, the mouse is made of money. So... Uh, <laughs> the rat. But DC, they can't... They can't get certain things done man yeah they like just, the new batman movie i've heard is having a lot of production problems. yeah they they just don't and know the director likes to take too many shots they don't know how to do it they just don't know how to do it that's all hey man um i got I like i got like not any time left oh hey well let me say happy new year again to everybody i love you i'll see you next friday cool and uh yeah I'll talk to you next Friday, Tom. All right, man. Thank you for being here again, Nate. Always a pleasure. Always fun. Anyway, bye-bye. Later. Oh, man. All right, everybody. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody who showed up today, and uh, certainly those of you who were here yesterday for Tomathon. Dolores Colbert, International Woman of Mystery, the King of Ireland, Terry Lawler. Ms. Tom Gully Show 2021 and the apple of our eye. Lynette Miller. Uh, also, uh, Tyler Schollenberger, the uh, Quad City madman. Uh, let's see, who else was here? Thomas Hamilton from Glasgow, Scotland. It's a great lad. It's just a great lad. Uh, Randy Ramos, the chef himself. My sister, my sister Kelly, my sister. And uh, anybody else? 
I don't know. That's about all we have time for. I will be here again on Monday. And uh, I'm going to sleep now. All that being said, Tim Brickley is going to take you out. <laughs> Excuse me. And uh, till next time, we'll see you next time. Yeah.